um, new accounts from CNN. It was an honor to meet 11-year-old Mia, who survived the Rob Elementary School shooting in Uvalde by smearing her friend's blood all over her and playing dead. Here's my CNN exclusive reporting. Dude, look at that. Look at what the fuck they're doing. Like, look at what kids had to do, dude. Um, are firefighters paid in the United States because I'm a voluntary firefighter in Austria and rule one is to put our lives at risk? Um, firefighters can be paid or volunteer depending on like the locality. Um, uh, but in, in most big cities, there are paid positions. I agree. We had 200 parents show up during a lockdown and we needed to have cops keeping them from storming our school and admin. But in this scenario, they certainly seem to have more than needed and did not handle it with the appropriate care concern. You know that the teacher who propped the door open will face more consequences than these cops ever will? Dude, that is the most insane part of this. Like, like that person is completely blameless, dude. What the fuck do you mean? Oh, they left the prop door open and now they're going to be used as the scapegoat? Because the cops couldn't do their fucking jobs? Because the, the government can't do its fucking job? They can't actually push for uh, adequate legislation? To, to, you know, uh, dial back the, the uh, guns that are in heavily, uh, heavily circulated, easily trafficked guns that are is so, so easy to fucking acquire in this country. There were kids alive. There were shots being fired. The local school district police chief was outside the door. He determined it was no longer an active duty situation. He did not order his men to break through the door. Of course, it was the wrong decision. Corporal McGraw going on to say... Yeah, remember, they were like, oopsie, we thought the kids were dead already. Just remember that. When they were making fucking constant 911 calls in secrecy while trying to hide their voices, while trying to not show the shooter where they are, they were trying desperately The cops did not hear their cries for help. The cops did not hear the 911 calls. I said, they're probably dead. So, you know, not an active duty situation anymore. It was the wrong decision, period. There's no excuse for that. CNN Shimon Prokopes live on the scene for us. Shimon, we have for a couple of days uh, wanted the truth, wanted the facts, wanted the specific timeline. We just got it, and it is damning, it is haunting, and for 21 families, it is devastating. It is very devastating. And now you know why the police were hesitating and why they were sort of giving us the runaround, because now we have the facts, and they're not good. Uh, they're not good for the police here. They're not good for anyone, law enforcement. Uh, the dis Bro, this is like, yo, people, I mean, this is, this is a little bit of a sea change, I think. This is an attitude shift that I'm noticing. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, you got Tucker Carlson fucking shitting on the cops in this circumstance. You got 19 fucking dead kids. You got 19 dead babies, dude. I mean, these guys, and you have 19 cops outside of that door not doing shit. I don't know. Among pundits, yeah. And yeah, no, even in the media bubble. Because, like, listen, these dudes love uh, sucking the boot, okay? These dudes love... Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Listen, I don't want to be that guy, but I can't imagine this would have played out the same way if the school were a predominantly white slash affluent neighborhood. What an interesting take from you, my friend. It did actually happen at Sandy Hook, which was a predominantly white and affluent neighborhood. Don't worry. Police uh, incompetence is a universal factor in this, okay? But this one wasn't even as bad as, uh, I mean, uh, in this circumstance, they were worse than at, at Sandy Hook. But don't worry. Parkland. Remember Parkland? Parkland is a fucking relatively wealthy, uh, well-off neighborhood. Yeah, white and affluent neighborhood. What did the fucking school resource officer do, bro? He shit his fucking diapers. Because when you're a school resource officer in the state of Florida, your sole purpose is to fucking brutalize black teenagers, okay? Shove their fucking faces into the hot concrete as you arrest them for being tardy or whatever the fuck, Okay? That's the only time. That's what you're supposed to do. That's, what, that's your job.
place was full of the good guys with guns that supposedly would have prevented Sandy Hook, but that farce the rest. Yeah. When arrested at the entrance of the NRA convention, protesters are shouting the woman is pregnant. Nice, dude. Let's go. Let's go, cops. Yeah, dude. More of this, please. Please, you know, exercise your fucking uh, use of force inappropriately. Once again, can't wait for that, dude. decision to not go inside that classroom was a for the record just i want you to i want you to understand dude dude um i want you to understand something the reason why the police response is never swift is because cops don't have to be swift they can get away with murder in the wrong places and they can get away with not doing the murder in the place where they're expected to the, the only main, the main point in that is that they can get away with it. There's no accountability because there is an attitude that cops are actually fucking throwing their bodies at the problem in instances like Uvalde because people genuinely believe by way of uh, media portrayal, because the media absolutely plays a significant role in like defending cops, no matter how fucking incompetent they are, local news, especially Okay. People have this attitude that cops are literally fucking rushing to, to take down shooters and, and throwing their bodies at the problem. Not to take away from the situation or look ahead too doomerly, but this man is going to set an awful precedent for cops to jump in. Jump to when they're too quick to kill someone in the future as well. Completely predictable and broken system. Exactly. There's the other side of that too. Now cops are going to be even fucking more brutal and be like, well, what? You wanted us to be fucking brutal. You wanted us to be brutal. You wanted us to be swift. Here, we're being swift. And they're going to continue murdering the wrong people over and over again. I'm pretty sure there's a legal precedent that states uh, that they are not required to act, not required to help, not legally liable if they choose to do nothing. Oh, of course. No, I know. There was, a, I believe, a 2005 Supreme Court decision that dictated that cops don't actually have to fucking... Uh, they're not legally liable and are legally required to act in a situation that puts their life at risk, okay? Uh, and then even, yeah, here it is, 2005, June 28th, 2005. Justices rule that the police do not have a constitutional duty to protect someone. The decision with an opinion by Justice Anthony Scalia, rest in piss, you piece of shit, and dissents from Justices John Paul Stevens and Ruth Bader Ginsburg overturned a ruling by a federal appeals court in Colorado. The appeals court had permitted a lawsuit to proceed against the Colorado town, Castle Rock, for the failure of the police to respond to a woman's pleas for help after her estranged husband violated a protective order by kidnapping their three young daughters, whom he eventually killed. For hours on the night of June 22nd, 1999, Jessica Gonzalez tried to get the Castle Rock police to find and arrest their estranged husband, Simon Gonzalez, who was under a court order to stay 100 yards away from the house. He had taken the children, ages 7, 9, and 10, as they played outside, and he later called his wife to tell her that he had the girls at an amusement park in Denver. Ms. Gonzalez conveyed the information to the police, but they failed to act before Mr. Gonzalez arrived at the police station hours later, firing a gun with the bodies of the girls in the back of his truck. The police killed him at the scene. The theory of the lawsuit... Ms. Gonzalez filed in the federal district court in Denver was that Colorado law had given her an enforceable right to protection by instructing the police on the court order that you shall arrest or issue a warrant for the arrest of a violator. She argued that the order gave her a property interest within the meaning of the 14th Amendment's due process guarantee, which prohibits the deprivation of property without due process. The district court and a panel in the United States Court of Appeals for the 10th Circuit dismissed the suit, but the full appeals court reinstated it and the town appealed. The Supreme Court's precedents made the appellate ruling a challenging one for Ms. Gonzalez and her lawyers to sustain. They don't protect property? No, dude, that's not... No, they don't protect women, okay? that It's not... They're trying to fucking... The cops are notoriously bad at, at enforcing temporary restraining orders. If you've ever gotten a temporary restraining order, if you've ever gotten, like, a sea of fucking death threats and had to at least, like, uh, go talk to the cops about it, 
uh, to a degree where you have to talk to the cops about it, they will straight up tell you, well, we can do a temporary restraining order, but one, you will be informing the other person. Uh, we will be informing the other person that you are, you know, uh, getting a temporary restraining order against them. And in most circumstances, that can actually agitate them further. And two, a lot of people falsely assume that a temporary restraining order actually means like there's a physical barrier. There is no physical barrier. This person can still come over. It's just a way to basically document it for the court cases in the inevitable fucking murder that happens to you. Um, so just remember that as well. I mean, this is a very real conversation that I've had with a fucking Los Angeles Police Department detective. I'm not fucking pulling this shit out of my ass. They straight up, when I went uh, and, and had a conversation with the police, like many, many years ago, you know, when, when I first started getting death threats and it wasn't like the fucking norm for me, I was like, holy shit. And my manager was like freaking the fuck out. And it was like, you have to go talk to the cops right now. 